and visions um, uh, that Daniel was brought um, uh, to his uh, his attention and mind to write down, to write down for us in the last days that we would understand these things. This is what it's talking about, the rise of a, a ruthless Antichrist dictatorial uh, world empire, which would be much like Rome, which will, in the same sense, have an emperor like Rome, which will stamp um, its culture upon the whole world, things will change times, and laws, and they shall be given into his hand. In other words, the world's culture, times and laws will be given into his hand for a time, one year, times, two years, and, and the dividing of time, half a year, so three and a half years. And then Jesus Christ, um, you will have the second coming of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of the saints um, after the tribulation of those days. Can't be emphasised enough. Well, this angel flies in swiftly and, in short, gives Daniel a timeline of the end. He gives him a timeline and talks of the what they call the 70 weeks are determined upon my people. Don't forget, Daniel would have been praying for his people of his day. Jerusalem uh, is, in re uh, is in ruin. Uh, the, the walls are all brought down. The temple is down. It's all down. So this angel um, comes in in answer to Daniel's prayer. He's praying for his people and, and gives him a timeline into the future. Well, this timeline came for true to the latter, to the letter. And 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Now, weeks in this chapter is a, it's an old word, Hebrew word, Shabuah. Translated and interpreted as being uh, weeks, meaning uh, years. In other words, a week being seven days in a week, that's seven years. So 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, uh, upon, thy, upon thy holy city to finish the transgressions. Don't forget the people are in transgression, therefore the city is in wreck and ruin. And the walls are all down, very important to the Jews to have a wall around their city. In those days, Jerusalem needed a wall around it. It would be 40 foot high, 8 foot thick, to keep the enemy out. So in having the walls um, torn down around your city was an absolute disaster in those days because that would mean the enemy could just waltz in and take over an attack. You were safe inside, you kept the enemy out. These days, of course, the walls uh, wouldn't keep an enemy out, just blow the damn thing up and in you go. Back then, you only had spears and, and uh, swords and you couldn't exactly do that, but you could in time because smash the wall down, which would take um, time. But all of this, um, it happened with uh, Nebuchadnezzar coming in and taking over and eventually smashing down, after no doubt great battles, smashing down this great wall around Jerusalem and destroying the temple. So everything's in wreck and ruin. And Daniel's praying for his people. And so this angel flies in swiftly and gives him a timeline um, for not only his people, but for God's people in the last days. God's people in the last days pointing to God's people being the ones that have received Jesus, that have entered into a true covenant with God through Jesus Christ. There is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you break um, the covenant, break the agreement in breaking the commandments of Jesus Christ, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. A new commandment I give unto you, that you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. So if you break his commandments, his great commandment of love, of these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy strength, all thy might, and thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. So in loving your neighbour as yourself, you are loving God. So if you break God's commandments and every rule in the book, which all hang under the great commandment of love, then you're not in alignment with God. You're out of a covenant. You're out of agreement. So the covenant is very important in these chapters because the children of Israel, God's people of that day, had broken the commandments of God didn't comply with the commandments of Moses, hadn't listened to the prophets and therefore broke every rule in the book, therefore went into desolations, went into wreck and ruin. The wall and the temple all brought down the streets, all in a disastrous state. Everything gone into decay, wreck and ruin. Why? 
because they broke God's commandments and bowed the knee to every idol and false um, prophet listened to them in the land and uh, went over to um, even gods and worship every um, star in heaven and got into witchcraft and every other sin imaginable or even unimaginable. So God judged um, them in that day and allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come in and bring them all into captivity. Hence, you had Daniel in captivity. And whilst in captivity, him praying for his people and getting these various prophecies which would regard his people, God's people, not just his people being the Jewish people, but God's people in the last days, Jesus Christ coming of the seed of Abraham. If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. So if you're one of those that receive Jesus Christ into your heart and you are what's called, corny phrase, no doubt these days, a born again Christian, that you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, then if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. So you're one of the children of Israel by faith in that you've received Jesus Christ, who was born of the same lineage of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Eventually Jesus would come in. You receiving Jesus would make you part of the Commonwealth of Israel, being the whole family of Israel, though not necessarily a bloodline um, a child of God, but a child of God by faith, by receiving Jesus Christ into your heart. Many came and came unto his own, it says. Jesus came unto his own, but his own received him not. The children of Israel didn't receive Jesus. The hierarchy rejected and crucified their own king. All of this prophesied in the writings of Daniel. Well, here's this angel coming in, giving him a timeline of the end. And he talks about the rebuilding of the wall, even in troublous times, and even gives him the time when all of this would happen. It would happen when this king, back those in those days, if you're in captivity, you would need a king to give you permission to do this, that, and the other, and affairs and other things. Well, in the book of Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah asked our text, the Great, to give him permission to go and rebuild um, Jerusalem, rebuild the walls and the cities and so on. So the walls and the cities and, and the streets all in, in wreck and ruin because uh, Nebuchadnezzar the, had uh, wrecked and ruined um, and brought the children of God uh, of that day children of Israel that day into captivity. So here's Daniel in captivity praying for his city. And the angel flies in swiftly and gives him a timeline for God's people, the broader sense of God's people in the last days. This I'm talking to those that have aligned themselves with Jesus Christ. They are not all Israel which are of Israel, but the children of the promise, the children of God who received Jesus the ones that are new creatures in Christ Jesus, these are true spiritual Israel. They're not necessarily part of the bloodline. So this talking to all of God's people and also talking to um, God's people of that day, which would still largely be here in this day, being the Jewish lineage of the children of Israel that are still left these days that are now um, residing in the land of Israel of our day. So he prophesies way into the future and talks of this um, timeline when uh, when Artaxerxes the Great gives um, Nehemiah permission to go and rebuild um, the walls around Jerusalem and the streets. In its own words, 70 weeks are determined, that's 470 weeks are determined upon thy people for 190 years, upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, finally make an end of sins, when Jesus comes back, to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness, which will eventually happen when Jesus returns, and to seal up the vision of the prophecy and to anoint the most holy. To anoint the most holy here is to anoint Jesus Christ as king. The children of Israel of that day had, had their various kings, and each time a king became a king, and they placed a crown upon the head of that king, he was anointed to be king. Well, anointed by the Holy Spirit of God, in other words. So in other words, um, Jesus Christ, who is already the anointed king, because he's the anointed one, Jesus Christ, meaning the anointed one, will be the anointed king in the last days, will be finally the king that stands up above all of these other kings, 
whether it was Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, whether it was um, King David or King Solomon, whichever king um, sat on the throne in Israel, the final king that would be 